having just come back from New York and the Selma Gundy Club seeing the Emil Carlson show, I was very much inspired by his painting Enragements in Gray. So I came home and I set something up somewhat similar with some brass and, and copper vessels with some garlic and shallots. I wanted to keep this really quite um, simple, a very kind of monochromatic, a lot of grays in it, a lot of negative space to make this main vessel really stand out. But anyway, it was just what we needed to come back and get invigorated and inspired to paint. So we're hoping that that experience that we have, we can share it with you and invigorate you as well. The one thing that we we really noticed about Emil Carlson's work is about how controlled he was in the beginning stages of his painting. Shannon and I talked about this a lot. In fact, we were, you know, we were trying to figure out his process when the director of the Selma Gundy Club came up to us and um, I get Tim Newton, you know, our friend Tim Newton, who used to be the president of the Selma Gundy Club, called him up and says, hey, Liz and Shanna there, you need to give them a private tour. And he did. He walked us around the whole place. We we saw the the storage area, lots of paintings that were in the story era, storage area. And he is somewhat of an expert on Emil Carlson. And so he sat us down, probably spent two hours with us telling us what he has learned from his process um, in investigating Emil Carlson and the way he painted. So first of all, Emil Carlson prepped his own canvases and he, and he used a formula um, that was somewhat kind of um, secret, I guess. And I'm, I'm going to put a link to his, to his website, the, the, um, the, the executive director of the Selma Gundy Club, the page that he has created for Emil Carlson. It's emilcarlson.org, I think. But I think the formula is there. But he created this, he created his own ground. Um, and you know then what he did is he he made a drawing on paper and then he took that drawing and he transferred it onto the canvas and then he went over that drawing with um he says the a bluish type paint whether it was ultramarine or cobalt or something but kind of thinned down and he would go over his drawing with the paint and let that dry so that when he went to paint um those lines were fixed and he didn't lose his pattern. So, you know, I have said many times, those distinct pattern lines feel like jail to me. I much prefer to start a little looser, a lot more abstract and, and freer in my start. But I am going to try and um, be a little bit more Emil Carlson-like with this painting. And the one that just floored me was the arrangement in grays. And um, we did a little video while we were there but a beautiful, be beautiful painting that just knocked your socks off. And the image doesn't do it justice. You can't see the texture in the paint. You can't see all the little subtle temperature shifts um, that he put into the garlic um, and into the vessels. But uh, that's what I want to talk to you about today in this lesson. So I have set up something really similar. In fact, I bought this vessel a couple months ago in um, August. I was in Sacramento teaching. And we went antiquing one day and I found this vessel and, and bought it without even thinking about Emil Carlson. But when we went to the Emil Carlson show, I went, oh my gosh, I have a vessel that's similar and I can't, I can't wait to paint it now. So I've set it up with, with garlic and brass and shallots and a little, my little brass bowl. Originally I thought, well, I was just going to do something really simple for you, just the vessel and maybe some garlic, but the more I played around with my composition, the more um, I just wanted a few more elements. If painting everything here as I have it is a little overwhelming, again, just, just do the little section of, of garlic or just focus on the vessel. Um, I could probably have, you know, two or three little paintings from this, from this setup. I have my um, iPad image here, which is exactly the same photo that you are painting from, but I am seeing it in life. And the interesting thing is I also have it up on my computer. You can see it's up on my computer on my Mac. And depending on your computer, um, you know, a PC or how the colors are calibrated, it could look completely different on your computer, whether maybe it's a little bit warmer or it's a little cooler. Um, but that's kind of irrelevant as long as we still are having, you know, the, the um, value relationships good. So 
but that's this is what's interesting. The photo in my on my computer is slightly different than the photo on my I, my iPad. It's a little bit more chromatic on my on my Mac and a little less chromatic on my iPad. And my iPad is a little bit more similar to reality. Um, I could certainly go into my Mac and kind of reduce the saturation level a, a little bit, but it just depends on you know how much chroma, how much color you want in your paintings. Um, also, I have this turquoise cloth you can kind of see here that I put on the side and I did this with our, I think I, our last lesson, but there's that little bit of backlight um, reflected color in that, that copper vessel that I think is just, I'm going to do it really subtle, but I think it's going to be just gorgeous. Um, I think this vessel's from Turkey. I'm not sure. Some of you might know, but I think it's a Turkish vessel. Um, so, and I've put just my, my dark greenish, neutral greenish background behind it. I am wanting this to be fairly monochromatic. I don't want, um, is, this isn't a painting that's going to be about color. It's going to be about shapes, light and dark shapes. Um, so gosh, I'm just so excited. Um, I have a 20 by 24 canvas up here that I have uh, toned with the raw umber. And I think this is the C15 um, linen. Because I'm thinking, you know, I do want a lot of negative space around this painting. That was the one thing that um, I noticed about Emil Carlson's. He had a lot of negative space. And I've talked to you about this before when we did our composition lesson, that if you have a fairly simple composition, um, give it a lot of negative space because it makes it that much more powerful. If you crowd it in, it's not nearly as, as powerful. So I do have a lot of negative space going around um, in this background and the majority of the information is going to be down here in this, um, this bottom third. So what my plan for today is to get a, um, a good drawing and a good block in um, of the shapes and the, and the values, the shadow shapes and things like that. And, and maybe, I don't know, we'll see how far the day gets, work on some of this or just start to develop some, some detail in the vessels and then probably come back tomorrow and work on it some more. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a, this big of a painting done in, in a day, but we'll, we shall see. Um, I have my usual palette. Uh, with the exception, I am all out of cadmium yellow um, or cadmium yellow pale in Windsor Newton. So this is actually cad yellow medium, I think, in Gamblin. But I'm not going to worry, you know, I can get something close by two cad yellow by just mixing these two together, but a cool yellow or warm yellow, my orange, cad red, yellow ochre, this is Indian yellow, raw umber, transparent oxide red, alizarin, French ultramarine, viridian, ivory black. I've got my Neil McGilp, uh, Gamsol as my solvent.
Well, it's the next day and um, I've come back to kind of see how dry this layer is. And this part of the main vase is pretty dry. Um, this area with all the garlic, that's, that's not dry. I was hoping my background would be dry, but it's not. And I think I just, if I remember right yesterday, all I did was used the Gamsol. I'm, I would have been better to add a little bit of the Neo McGilp to this mix so that this would dry. Um, but so I think what I'm going to end up doing is really working on the vase. Um, and I, when I came back in, I'm not liking the color that I made the foreground. I think it needs to be a little cooler, um, a little bluer gray down here, which I think will be nice with the orangey tones. Um, and then definitely try and get the background darker. But I think because this layer isn't dry, it's probably going to take me two more times with the background to get it to where I want it. Um, so uh, let's just um, work on the main vessel right now. When I stand back and look um, the, the, in, the, in life, the vessel seems um, a bit browner, not quite as red as I have it. So I'm going to let up on my um, transparent oxide red when I remake these mixes and use probably more of the umbers and ochres uh, in that. So let's just get started again.
Well, we are now on day three of this painting, and it's actually been a couple days since I did the second part, the second day. Um, I came in yesterday to paint, and the background still wasn't dry enough for me, so I waited another day. So it's all of this is dry, and if you look at the image, you can tell um, because of whether, you know, I used the more um, of the earth tones, the raw umbers, the ochres that you use in your mix, the more the color is going to dry flat. Um, the alizarins and things, they tend to dry a little shinier than the earth tones, but you can see um, how flat it looks right now. And if I'm going to work over this, I want to give it a thin layer of um, the neoma gilt, maybe a little bit of the uh, gamsol in it so it's not too thick, just the, uh, just the neoma gilt by itself. We did that concept lesson on fat over lean. Um, and it's, and again, um, in regards to oil paint, you should always start with your dark colors first because they're thin and then you gradually move up to the lighter colors which are thicker. So there's, there's that, that the thicker paint goes on top of the thinner paint, but also the mediums that you use. And um, Gamsol is a thin, um, it's, it's thinner in its makeup where Neoma Gilp is fatter because of the varnish, um, linseed oil, or whatever is in it. So um, that's why I always start my paintings with Gamsol, and then as I continue to paint, I'll start adding a little bit more Neoma Gilp, and that's that thin um, under fat, fat over lean method. So, um, so what I'm going to do, I know the white, where I put the whites, that's, that's not dry. That's still a little tacky. So when I do this, I have to be careful not to um, go over the white. I don't think I need to do much here, but it's, it's mainly the background that I want to work on today. And I'm contemplating about, um, you know, still having it dark, but maybe a little bit more light over here so that, so that the vessel could stand out a little bit more. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to try and do, but the first thing I'm going to do, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clean brush and put some Neo McGilp in it and maybe add just a little bit of, um, Gamsol and just, and that just <laughs> makes everything so nice. So I can, you know, see those colors Whoops, now see, I just got into the white. That's what you don't want to do. So I have to be careful with that area.
Okay, so I've just put it in a frame and I think this frame actually looks really um, good with it. This is another red ashby frame. Um, in the painting, you probably can still see some shiny and dull spots, but again, that all disappears when it's varnished. Um, this is probably 22 karat or maybe 18 karat, which goes nicely um, with this. The frame is simple. It's not overpowering. It doesn't overtake the, um, the painting. I'm loving the little turquoise bits that I put in. Um, I think I really did a good job on this part, but uh, I'll let it sit for a few more days and look at it again with a fresh eye and see if it needs any tweaks, but I'm pretty happy with it so far. If the 20 by 24 feels a little bit big to you, this would work really well on a 16 by 20. Um, just a, a, everything would be a little bit smaller. I really enjoyed this one. It was It's fun to do a painting without any flowers every once in a while. So I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint it and I hope you're inspired to paint. Thanks.